would strike in the second quarter. First and 10 at the 46, down 7-3, down no more. Andy Dalton, Amari Cooper had a big day. 54 yards in a score, six catches, 112 yards. Cowboys in the lead, 10-7. Mike McCarthy then getting aggressive. Five and a half to go in the second, fourth and inches. His own side of the field, they're throwing a pass. Broken up by Ronald Darby. Cowboys turn it over and it turns into this. Alex Smith, Logan Thomas, Washington up 17-10 at halftime. A lot of defense in the third quarter, under five to go. Washington's up seven. Alex Smith, this is not what he had in mind. Jalen Smith is right there. Looks like he's going to score. But how about the effort from Terry McLaurin? Chases him down and keeps the ball out of the end zone, which proves to be significant because on the ensuing drive, this is the second down play, trying tricky stuff. Cowboys showing no confidence in their offense. That's C.D. Lamb going nowhere. They settle for a field goal, 20 to 16. Then more trouble, early fourth, fourth and 10, their own 24-yard line. The Dallas Cowboys run what I think can be described as the worst fake punt in the history of the sport. Actually, we've confirmed it. Hembo looked it up. It is the worst fake punt in the history of the National Football League. Washington takes over, and they're in business, and they will capitalize. First and 10 at the Cowboy 23. How about the rookie, Antonio Gibson? There's a 23-yard touchdown, 115 yards on the day. He waves goodbye to the Cowboys' chances. 27-16 is the score. Next Washington possession, third and six at the 37. It's Gibson, again. It's daylight, again. He's the first rookie to score three touchdowns on Thanksgiving since Randy Moss. Washington, it's fourth win, 41-16. Hey, Mike McCarthy, how about that fake punt? On, on the fake punt, fake punt call, do you ever consider the negative part of it and say, okay, we're in this game, it's a four-point game, let's just punt it and see if we can get a stop? Well, you won't get anywhere if you're thinking about negatives all the time. Um, you know, obviously it was a solid play call. It's a good play design. Their gunner made a good play, came off of it. He put us in a high-low read. That's the nature of those plays. You can never convert them, obviously, if you don't call them and if you don't believe in them. So I clearly understood the situation when it was called. Mike, just to clear that up, you're saying you believe that's a solid play call and the risk doesn't even factor into it because that's negative thinking? I'm, I'm fine with my, my answer before. So that's how that went. And let's bring in the guys for the conversation here. So he described that as solid play call and solid play design. Bart, there were other adjectives I might have used to describe it. What did you think of what we saw from the Cowboys there? See, everybody's a genius until the play doesn't work or, or it does work. And um, Bone Jones or Baby Fossil, what we used to call him, is a genius. And sometimes he can convince these coaches. You have two players on the same play making a great read. You have the guy on the end line of scrimmage not going down and, and blocking this man. He's holding up the, uh, the punter who's going to throw the ball. And then you have the gunner that didn't go with the motion and run down blindly to hold up the punter. Uh, what was surprising is the fact of the place on the field that they did it. Because if it doesn't work, it turns automatically into at least three points for the opposing team. And that's exactly what it did. You know, it stopped them and then the next play to, to give up the touchdown. And it was a rash in the beginning of the snowball effect of them losing this football game. So, Nikovich, let's get into not so much the how, but the why. They run the fake punt. They're running reverses in the red zone. They're running all this crazy stuff. What does that tell you about what the coach thinks of his team? Lack of confidence, number one. When I see these plays, the trick plays, when you're going deep in the playbook to try and come up with something to score or to convert a fourth down, that means that you don't have confidence that you can go out there and run a normal play and get the job done. So when I watch them go for it on a, on a fake punt, fourth and ten, deep in their own territory, I mean, look, I've seen a bad punt. I've seen the Colts cat catastrophe um, October 18th, 2015. That was a bad fake punt. This is a bad <laughs> fake punt. And when you do those things, it's just lack of confidence, plain and simple. So, Sanchez, when you watch this offense play, because we're sitting here talking about Mike McCarthy not having confidence in his offense, maybe that lack of confidence is justified. They lose two offensive linemen at the very beginning of the game. In fairness, that obviously plays a role here. What did you see from it yesterday, Mark? That will 100% affect the way you call plays. But I'm not used to being the contrarian and going against the grain here. But if... The tables are turned, and Washington loses this game. I mean, they ran a fumble ruski, okay? They, they let their tight end throw a pass. Like, everybody around the league yesterday, the Lions, the, the Texans, everybody ran 
trick plays. So everybody goes deep in their playbook on Thanksgiving, and they do some fun stuff, some stuff that gets their guys energized. they got to get the, the energy amped up. It's, an, it's a short week. Guys are tired. Guys want to be with their family. So I get it, but we can't be too hard on them. I understand they gave up three points automatically, and of course, they're searching. It's, it's a rough game for them. They lose two linemen, like you said, before the game. So yeah, of course, they're searching a little bit, but let's be fair for everybody. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest play, but you could see it from the end zone right here. He's got a guy open, Bart. He's got a guy open just past the 40-yard line. It, it did seem to me, Bart, that he, he should have been looking to throw the ball, but it doesn't look to me like he ever actually looks. When I first see the play, thing, I'm thinking he's going to throw a pass, but he doesn't look like he's aware that he's going to throw a pass. Well, he wanted to throw the pass, but much like C.D. Lamb's play, the, the, the intended receiver was was covered. And they tell you if the receiver's covered, you have to go ahead and run it. So you give yourself two options. And they pulled him up. You look at it, the gunner never went down with him. And listen, it was one of those things where you're a genius if it works, and you're an idiot if it doesn't. So, you yeah. know, Ball Jones and McCarthy's going to be idiots for the day. But you don't stop yourself from making these plays because when they work, they're usually huge chunk plays. They were trying to spark this team. You think about a team that has no offensive lineman, you can't believe in Ezekiel Elliott because they, they can't get the, the push off the ball. So you get desperate. You know, Brian Billy, you say it all, all the time. You know, some, you got, you're kind of fooling with trickery sometimes. And sometimes, you know, it makes um, something out of you and me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I get it. And so, Ninkovich, I mean, let's talk about the Cowboys for a minute. And granted, they've had a lot of terrible things happen. They had the tragic event of this week. They lost Dak Prescott early in the season. They've had a variety of injuries. And again, lose the two linemen at the beginning of the game yesterday. But they play in the worst division that maybe we've ever seen. And yesterday, they were practically knocked out of that race. What are the Dallas Cowboys, Rob Ninkovich, right now? I mean, I, I think I can't even answer that question because when I watch them, your best player, Zeke Elliott, leads the NFL in fumbles. He's giving the ball away multiple times with six on the year. So when your best players aren't playing to the level that they should and the level that you're paying them and you're losing offensive linemen and you've lost your big – your big time starting quarterback who was supposed to be you know the savior this year because he was on a contract year and he unfortunately got hurt it just deflated the sales and basically the Cowboys team Jerry Jones is up there in his box beating up his chair that he's sitting on because he's watching everybody go down with injuries watching bad football on fourth down fake punts Mike McCarthy looks like he doesn't have control of that team looks like he might not be the coach there next year it, it is a complete mess in Dallas for sure. On the flip side, Mark, let's talk about the team that won this game yesterday and that has started to stabilize things. And they've got a, a first-year coach who everybody respects a lot there and around the league. They've got a good young running back. They've got a good young wide receiver. They've got a ton of good young defensive linemen. Is Washington the best team in that division, Mark Sanchez? I think the way things are going right now, it really looks that way. And part of that, like you said, we entered this season learning about Ron Rivera battling cancer, and he's been just such a calming presence for that whole organization. They went through the name change. If anything, he was the savior for them, and they didn't even realize it. He's the perfect personality, the guy who can control this locker room and keep guys together, energize them, motivate them to crescendo at the right time and potentially make the playoffs. It looks like they're, they're in the driver's seat to win the division. Feels that way. And, Bart, I know that you like their quarterback. If you look around that division, he's the one you trust? Well, that's the quarterback I trust the most because he's been a game manager. He's a guy that's going to understand the situational football. And that's what you, you know, this division's about not losing it as opposed to winning it. And you saw yesterday <laughs> the desperation times that the Cowboys lost their confidence and they lost the game. They didn't win it. They handed it right to them. It was something that the Patriots always did to every team.